On today's show, the Mavericks will face off against Los Angeles Clippers. Luca told us what the biggest difference is between these teams. And we're going to answer all of our big questions that we have for this series on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks. NBA champion. He is back. He is back. He is back. It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. Thank you. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome, you are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and media channel manager for Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show, making Locked On Mavs your first, second, third, fourth listen of the day, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Leave a prediction, answer one of the questions that we got in the comments below, and then go over to Locked On Clippers. Just comment, well, we have a title. That's it. Just comment that. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I got a competitive side. I'm sure you do too. I'm a big fan of Monopoly Go. It's the mobile hit twist on a classic Monopoly game. So join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. Joining me. You've heard him here. Not first, but you've heard him here all season. Breaking down Mavs wins, whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. What you got for me, Slightly Biased? Don't know if you guys can tell a difference today in the way I look. I've adjusted my lighting setup, so... I saw that the lighting was different. Bit. You're sitting down too, which is which is different yeah. than normal. Changed um, my area, so just if I look yeah. a little out of it, it li- just just experimenting with some things. Yeah, the audio listener should be able to hear a difference. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's just I'm know, a little bit closer to the mic. Yeah, there's there's, le- there's less interference. There's less uh, fuzz or frizz or you know whatever mm-hmm. what, whatever the term is. Like there's definitely less of that. I'm just a little locked. I'm just like really locked in, guys. Really am. Locked in on Locked On. We're doing that. So, early in the week, Reggie and I answered, <laughs> answered a bunch of questions, asked a bunch of questions, the big questions about the series. And now Slightly and I are going to answer them. We're making some predictions. We're going through. Today, went to practice, heard from Luka Doncic. He was not happy to see us, but he was he was happy to be in playoff basketball again. And That's happy good to be news. all locked in. The when players practice- are mad, the media's there. That means that they're God. really, they're God. locked in. Luca is usually mad when the media shows up, but there's a lot of us there today, and he was he was not happy. But he <laughs> he sits down, and Kevin Gray asks him, friend of the show, asks him, "What's the biggest difference between this team and the team that you know faced the Clippers a couple years ago?" And he just said, "We have Kai," mm-hmm. and that was it. And so one of my big questions was, "How much of a difference will Kai remake?" And I think. All the difference, <laughs> I think, because I think the Mavericks will win this series, and I think Kyrie will make all the difference. That's my answer to, to the biggest question. How much of a difference will he make? All of it. Yeah, my my thing that I'm circling back to right now, Kyrie Irving, if by the time this, the series is over, what's going to be the answer to the question, How where does Kyrie Irving rank among the hierarchy of players in the series? If the answer is Kyrie was a top three player in the series, I think the Mavericks win the series. If the answer is Kyrie Irving was a top two player in the series, I don't think this is going to be a very long series. Uh, Take that as you will. And if Kyrie is the fourth or fifth best player, then it becomes a little bit dicier. So it really kind of boils down to Kawhi's health, one. But also, two, if Luka and Kyrie are playing their games, that is a lot to throw at a team that has been struggling mightily defensively lately. I feel like I've been repeating myself. I've done many episodes this week already. I will do many more. I feel like I've been repeating myself, but we cannot. I cannot stress how much of a difference Luca has never played with somebody that is a guaranteed playoff player before, like this, yeah. right? That is a guaranteed playoff scorer. Porzingis was not guaranteed. He had some good moments in the bubble for sure. Scored thirty-four points against the Clippers in one of those games. Missed the last three. Brunson was played off the floor in the Clippers series the year before they went on the run, and even in the run, I mean, he averaged like eighteen points a game against the Suns. In that seven-game series, he had those good games against the Jazz. He wasn't that great against the the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. Luka has not had this guaranteed type of player next to him that they vibe in in, in this way that they've been playing well together. And one of the big one of the big things I think Kyrie will bring that he's brought this team that I think is going to make a huge difference that I asked Jason Kidd about today is the pace. Kyrie was the one that came in and like really got Luca and everybody to push pace. I mean, kid was trying to get them to do it. And then it became a real emphasis, like point of emphasis over the off season. And then in training camp, it was a huge point of emphasis for everybody. Cause they saw the difference in the two styles. 
And the Clippers really struggle with 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 pace and speed because they're an older team. If you look around the West, they're like one of the only old teams. If you, I guess you got the Lakers with LeBron, but like they're one of the only old teams right now, and they really struggle with pace. Uh, and I think that Kyrie, that's another big difference. I think he's going to bring is that he's he'll help push the pace. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy you said that because the Clippers defensively, even even when they were playing really well defensively, they haven't been a good transition defense really at any point this season. And uh, for the Mavs, they have been a top 10 transition offense, which is a little bit shocking. It's the first time <laughs> this oh franchise <laughs> has been top 10 uh, as a transition offense since 2012. So it's been well over a decade since that's happened. And they get out and transition more and Kyrie Irving's on the floor. Uh, it just opens up a lot of things. And I think the way we're the Mavs all, play. Were all the Mavs born then in 2012? <laughs> I don't know. So, I so would long ago. To, 70% of my community definitely was not born then. So, uh, but anyways, <laughs> um, that came out weird. Uh, you guys, know <laughs> uh, <laughs> a community of Kai stands. That's that's yes, the, that's a community. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, sometimes my my community acts like it. How about that? Sometimes. Uh, anyways, uh, Kyrie Irving gets out and runs, and the way the Mavericks get out in transition is very, I, I think, translatable to the postseason. It's not some gimmicky. God, I, I don't know when the when was the last time I came on here and didn't trash the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> You're about, about, to, about to go in on them again. It's not some you and, gimmicky. You and your community just hate the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> it's not some gimmicky Kings or Pacers offense, even though the Pacers have kind of slowed it down as they've they ramped up for the playoffs. The yeah, it's not something like that where we're going to get out and go seven seconds or less, and then the playoffs come around. It's like, oh wait, this game's way this slower. Is all, this is all we do, right? Like, yeah. Exactly. It's hit ahead passes to guys who run the floor. It's Kyrie Irving getting outlet passes and pushing the pace and either tr pulling up in transition or attacking a, a defense that's not set. Those things can easily translate to the playoffs. Yeah. And against a Clippers team that is older, that, you know, I think that should be a point of emphasis for the Mavericks, where I've gotten a little upset at their transition opportunities at times. Feels like they go too quickly. Uh, against a slower team, it makes all the sense in the world. Force them to run. And force those tired legs to get moving. Those old legs. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned the Mavs being a top 10 transition offense. On cleaning the glass, they take out garbage time. They take out heaves and things like that. So they're 11th. But look at where they were the last, like, in the Luka era. 30th, 29th, 26th, 29th, or 28th, 29th, 30th. <laughs> in the Luka That's era. Crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Literally one of the worst transition teams, and now they finally added it. And like, man, you got to give credit to to Kid and Kyrie for adding that, having the foresight to add this level of of offense to the Mavericks. And to, to you know, it seems simple. It's like a classic. It's like a classic NBA like basketball thing. Oh, we got to play faster, play with pace, and be able to play different ways. But adding this way to play completely has changed the Mavericks in in a way that they can play a team like this Clippers team, and they don't have to just grind it out every single possession. Now, everything slows down in the playoffs, and yeah. and I think that there won't be as many opportunities. Like, they were they were 13th in, like, frequency of transition. They were in transition 15% of the time, where normally they're in it, like, 11%, 12% of the time. But the Mavs are able to grind it out, too, still. Like, they can, yeah. they can still do that. They haven't lost that ability with Luka and with Kyrie now. But if they can just do it a little bit, a little bit here and there, I think that that that's, that pace is going to be so big. And that was one of the things that Darian talks about in our crossover with Locked On Clippers uh, that they struggle with pace, and we're, I think we're going to see it. I think the Mavs are really going to try. Yeah, and I'm just channeling my inner Jason kid. I've done exercises and routines to try and think exactly like Jason Kidd thinks, and I'm just thinking of a world where he says, "Hey guys, we got to get out and run." And I think they're going to run a good amount. And it's like you said, they don't do it very often. But like I mentioned earlier, like the way that they get out in transition is very replicable in the playoffs. It's not, I'm sprinting up and down the court endlessly. And the other team's like, dude, we got to get, we got to travel. We got to get on a plane in three hours and go to <laughs> Charlotte. Like I'm not getting up and down the court with you like this. This is, you know, playoff basketball where teams are going to be locked in. But if Daniel Gafford can sneak behind the defense or Derek Lively can sneak behind the defense or, yeah. Uh, you know, Kyrie or Josh Green or whoever, and Luka can have hit head passes. I look, the Clippers transition numbers off of live ball, uh, live rebounds is terrible. Like defensively, yeah. they are really bad defensively off live, live ball rebounds. So uh, that'll be really interesting to see because we've never seen that from the Mavs in the playoffs. It's never been a point of emphasis for them in the Luka era. No. And Kawhi is dealing with this knee inflammation and knee 
you know, swelling. And if you believe he's going to miss games or if you don't, I mean, he'll be limited, right? He won't be 100% Kawhi with, with this. And so I think that affects their transition defense too because he is by far their best defender. And uh, yeah, like if you can get ahead of him too, I think that's that's huge. Coming up, the the size of the Mavericks, the big and the small of it. Do they want to go small? Do they want to stay big? What's more beneficial? We'll give our answer to both those things coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Everyone has things in their life that you want to talk about, that you want to uh, work through. You've got something that just is that grinds your gears. You maybe uh, are stuck in a bald cap today. Maybe that's something that you want that you want to talk about. That would that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> with somebody you want to work through it and a therapist will help you especially someone at better help you can uh schedule at any time you, they're they're very flexible you can find the right time that fits for you doesn't have to be the same time every week either it's online so you don't have to go anywhere you can find a real comfortable spot in your house or go somewhere else if you you know want to uh and I, I've, I've loved using better help if you think about giving therapy a try give better help a try First, it's entirely online, designed to be flexible, suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA to get 10% off your first month. Again, betterhelp, H E L P.com slash lockdown NBA. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for listening to the show, whether it's the first episode you listen to or the second one you listen to this day, as we have multiple episodes. If you missed the episode with Isaac last night, we did some preview about the difference between the Mavs then and the Mavs now. And uh, Darian Vizier and I tonight will be talking about Mavs Clippers and a lot of good stuff in there because he's watched Clippers more than probably anybody besides like their coaching staff, <laughs> basically, this season. All right, another big question. One of the big questions I have for this series. My big question started with, you know, when you like initially set out to write questions about a series and mm-hmm. then as you do more work, you're like, I think I asked the wrong question here. My, my question started out as, will the Mavs be able to stay big? My, I think my question now would be, shouldn't the Mavs want to go small? <laughs> I, think, I think that's my question now because looking at these two teams and seeing the difference between the two, I think that the Mavericks will be able to win if I think the, it will be a mistake by the Clippers if they go small. Uh, I'm happy you said that. I was thinking the same exact thing watching some Clippers games. They're already a, a pretty bad rebounding team, and those yeah. numbers just tank when Zubats is off the court. And they now have this problem. I think the Clippers do. Where do you? There's we we've kind of talked about this on the show. You talked about it. Their their small ball lineups aren't as good as they used to be. I, I went back and I looked at the small ball stuff in 2021, like their their numbers. But Toom was huge for them in that role, and Morris. so was yeah Marcus Morris, who I think by the end of his tenure in Los Angeles, Clippers fans were pretty much ready for him to get out, walk out the door. But <laughs> he was like legitimately really important. For, did he get picked up by a team? Yeah, he did. Right? Was it uh, Cavs? Right. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was it was Cleveland. Okay, sorry, but uh, no, oh, you're right. The the small ball lineups we talked about haven't been nearly as effective for the the Clippers so far this season. And despite what how frustrated Mavs fans can get at times, like the Maxi and PJ Washington small ball groups statistically are incredible. Like they're they're on off. They're like their net rating and stuff is just phenomenal when those two are on the floor together. So yeah, I think it's kind of where. <sighs> If, if it's big, it's advantage Mavericks, in my opinion, because they do have Gafford and Lively, who I think are more versatile bigs than, than Zu, uh, Zubats is. And Zubats is a big physical lumbering big, so I think he could give Lively some problems maybe and you know could get Gafford into foul trouble potentially. But if they go small, I think the Mavericks' small ball lineup is also better than the Clippers. <laughs> it's, it's kind of just – I think the Mavericks are in a great spot right now, and I think this is like the perfect time for these two to be meeting again for the Mavericks. I just think that they're – They've checked a lot of the boxes they had to check between now or between 2021 and and now, if that makes sense in this matchup. Well, it's almost a completely different team. At least who's yeah. going to be playing? I mean, Tim is not the second guy anymore. There's no Porzingis. There's no, uh, you know, like there, there's no Seth. There's no, I mean, there's no Dorian, but PJ steps into his spot. Derek Jones Jr. Dante Exum is going to be huge in this series. Isaac and I talked about him. Uh, Daria and I talked about him. I think that's going to be massive. Uh, the Mavs are currently favored in this series on FanDuel. They're minus 120, and the Clippers are plus 102. So I, I think that Vegas agrees. I was listening to Tim Legler, the Mavs' number one fan. I think that he, that he, he agrees. 102? Uh, 
plus 102. I've never heard of a line like that. That's really interesting. Yeah, they do. Uh, the Suns right now are minus 118. Huh. Okay. They're really they're and, really and pinching at every dollar. <laughs> <They're really laughs> that's that's actually kind of shocking for the Suns, to be honest with you. But uh, I think how much of it has to do with Kawhi, though? If the Clippers come out and say, hey, guys, Kawhi's good to go, expect 38 minutes, bare yeah, minimum. They, they have game one. Clippers are favored in game one by one and a half. Yeah. I mean, that's, so, that's basically so, a pick them for a playoff game. For on a home, yeah, for a home game. Yeah, for the Clippers. So... Yeah, but I, I think the I think the Mavs have an advantage going small. There's not like there's not let's let's put it this way. We used to look at this Clippers team and go, oh my god, if they go small, how can the Mavericks match them? Yeah. And now they don't have that anymore. They you just gotta beat them straight up. Like the Clippers just have to beat the Mavericks straight up. And well, Z- and Luca just destroys Zubots every time every time he plays. And so what are they gonna turn to? There's also the angle where in the past, you know, you could go small against the Mavericks and it didn't matter. They didn't have like a way to punish you for that if they wanted yeah, to. And now true. we I, I know it's the Hornets and it's really stupid to like <laughs> compare the Hornets to the Clippers. I mean, completely different. It's Grant Williams, though. We all know. <laughs> true. Hey, small ball five. That was our hopes and dreams. But he started uh, in that game. yeah, he started at the five. They went super small. And my God, it was just a, a massacre down low. Like the Mavericks just. They can punish these really small ball teams if that's what they want to do. And obviously the Clippers offensively aren't even in the same stratosphere as the, as the Hornets. So it'll be a little bit more difficult. But yeah. then you look at their bigs, it's like well, P.J. Tucker, you know, you feel kind of okay leaving P.J. Tucker if he's out there as a small ball guy. Uh, Daniel Tice, you know, he can shoot the three, but it's like, okay, if a possession ends with Daniel Tice shooting threes, we're kind of okay with that. Or defending to, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like it's... The, Ma- the Mavericks, I think, are like I said, I think the Mavericks have positioned themselves very well in this matchup. Like all the things that used to concern us in this matchup, it feels like the Mavericks have addressed in a, ma- in a serious major way. Another one of my big questions was what if Derek Lively can't play at practice today? He participated fully, he did everything in practice, which is a really good sign for, for an injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was there, he was smiling, he was laughing with, with AJ Lawson. Uh, I think I, I imagine just in. Having known him now for this year, I can't imagine him w- missing a playoff game if, he, if he's available. And so I think that he'll play if he's healthy. So they're just going to keep seeing how it goes. I think they practice again on Thursday. And so they'll they'll see how it goes with him. Uh, but what if Derek Lively can't play? I, I don't think that's as big of a problem as I thought that it would have been at the beginning of this series when I first started looking at it. Yeah, Matt, I mean, it's just playoff maxi. Let's not forget who the, that guy was in 2022. <laughs> Like he was a big reason the Mavericks made that conference finals run with his floor spacing and his defense. So I, I think those Maxi small ball five minutes, especially in the last month, have been really good. And Maxi's been really good defensively, like some of the best he's ever looked, if I'm just being totally honest. Yeah. No, I, I was so I, when he came back from that toe injury, that the weirdest toe injury ever at the beginning of the yep. season, I, I was nervous that, like, oh my gosh, the Mavs signed into that deal couple more mm-hmm. years left like oh it just doesn't look the same is he washed you know you get the tweets all the time like oh maxi's washed what are you guys talking about and since since like the last i don't know three four months he's been really really good yeah it's not a coincidence that his best basketball has coincided with the mavericks defensive yeah that's uh, the very defensive true. rating being whatever it's been since whenever yeah there's so many uh, different dates people use <laughs> One of my one of my other big questions was was kind of in that same vein. It was uh, how much will the Mavs defenders make a difference, or like will the Mavs defense translate to the playoffs? And you just look at the difference in the defenders that the Mavs have now this time around. That Kawhi had an incredible like sixty. He shot sixty percent from the floor when they so he played good. the played the Mavs in the playoffs those two years. But he was getting guarded by Maxi. Then he was getting guarded by Seth Curry, Tim Hardaway Jr. Like he was not like Josh Richardson sometimes. He's just not getting guarded by a great guy. And I'm I think that all the margins that the Mavericks lost on last time that they played have closed this mm-hmm. time around. Like the the better wings, the better secondary score next to Luca, the better rebounding, the better defense, like everything, all those margins of the better small ball unit, they've all closed basically. And like I'm feeling real confident about this series the more I look into it. Like on paper, yeah. the Mavs should win this series. I think so, too. I, I think there's a reason why they're favorites, and I think most national media people are picking them. But the Kawhi thing, he's always going to get his. He's that level of superstar Absolutely. where he, he's going he's gonna to have his moments. You can just try your best to contain him. I thought about this because, you know, watching them play, I think one of the big strengths the Clippers have, obviously, is 
they do have some really great depth. And they got Norman Powell coming off the bench who yeah. can go off at any given moment. I mean, Russell Westbrook and Norman Powell are two of the best six men in the league. Like, both of them are. the two of the best guys off the bench in the league. So those two can come in and kind of wreck a game. So the Mavs bench is going to have to be really good in this one, like Dante Exum, like you said earlier. But I was thinking, I was like, when was the last time the Mavs got really gamed by a star? Because I was just like looking at their schedule and the teams they played. And it's like, first the Heat, Jimmy and Bam combined to score 20 on 8 of 21. Yeah. Steph in that win against the Warriors, 28 on 9 of 23, 5 of 14. I mean, that's an okay game, but he really didn't do much until the fourth quarter. The other game against the Warriors, he had 13 points on 5 of 18. Fox, 23 points on 9 of 22. Fox in the other game, 18 points on 6 of 18. Jokic, and this was just me going in order. Like, I haven't skipped any games. Jokic, <laughs> 16 points on 6 of 16. And then they lost to the Thunder without, she, without a Luka and Shea went off. But it took me a while to get to a point where I was like, the last time the Mavericks really got got by like a real uh, legitimate star. Giannis had 48 February that was, 3rd. Before that was the, the one. That's, that was the game I was thinking of in my head. Where it was like, that feels like the last time you left the game going. If Luke was on the floor, that was like the last time I was like, Luca was not the best player on the court tonight. Like every other time, it feels like the Mavs have done a good job defensively against star, the, uh, the opposing team stars. And that's been like a point of emphasis, I think. And they're, they're cool with, you know, I'm, I'm thinking back to like those Kings games where Keegan Murray was popping off at first and Harrison Barnes was popping off at first. Like that's hard to keep up over the course of a full game when a role guy is like scoring early on. You know which one I can really think of? that It's not necessarily a star, but it's uh, – I mentioned this on the crossover. It's one of the, the weaknesses the Mavs have. Remember when Miles Turner just went – just completely went off in those Pacers yeah. games and hit 30 – like scored 33 points and they lost that game? Uh -huh. uh, but it's because he was a shooting big, and they don't have one of those. Like maybe Paul George can act as that shooting big. Maybe they set screens with Paul George and he flares out and, you know, the Mavs have to decide if they're going to stick with Kawhi or stick with Harden and go out and – guard Paul like but they're not going to leave Paul George wide open the way that they did Miles no. Turner like you don't make that choice and Ty, I mean Tice can shoot but you're not concerned about him shooting the way that you're concerned about a Miles Turner shooting so no definitely not. it'll be interesting and here's the thing too Luca and Kyrie are gonna have to defend they're gonna get put in actions they're, they're gonna get hunted yep. defensively and it's it's gonna be interesting I was watching uh the the Clippers lost to the Sixers, and the, the Sixers were doing some really interesting stuff defensively. That's Nick Nurse, where they had basically just let Bamba sit under the basket and did not care about Zubats at all. And that really threw the Clippers for a loop in, in the first half of that game. So I'm interested if they do creative things with the bigs or if they just say, hey, this is how we've been playing and it's been working. So we're going to stick to these guys playing up at the screen at times, and they've been good at it. The bigs have. My last big Mavs question at the beginning of this whole thing was, will the Mavs shaky shooting hold up? You've got mm -hmm. PJ, Tim Hardaway, Exum, Derek Jones Jr. Like it was kind of, kind of and, and Maxi, I'll throw him in there too. It was kind of shaky. It's kind of shaky there for a little bit. I think that they will, they will have to have some of these guys hit shots for sure. I don't think that it's going to be, it can't just, just be Luca and Kyrie, but I'm again, not as worried about the shooting because the Mavs have found ways to win these games when they don't shoot the ball. Well, the Nuggets, yeah. I keep going back to the Nuggets game. They shot under 30% from three as a team, and they won the game. With was that the game Nuggets they made team. six threes? Probably. Was that a different game? But, it, no, you are right. I do I, – I was just like you. I was thinking about the shooting, and it scares me. It does scare me. Like, they're, they're going to have to knock down shots. Yeah. I think the Clippers are going to pick and choose. Derek Jones Jr. is going to have to hit threes if he wants to play extended minutes of the series. Otherwise, I could see a world where Exum is starting game three. Because Derek Joe Jr. is one of twelve yeah. from three. If they're and playing, if they're, the Clippers are playing small, though, couldn't you just see Derek Jones Jr. and just drive to the rim a bunch yeah. of times and like because with PJ, that, that's something they've added too. It's not it's not live or die by the three as much as it used to be. Yeah, uh, I agree with you on that. This is this is a big concern though that I have because they're going to get those shots and mm -hmm. Luca and Kyrie and Kid are all going to be like take the shot. Like everyone, yeah. you, you got to take the shot to be out there. I think what I was thinking is. I, I expect a massive downtick in just at, like statistical production from Luca in this series compared to his other Clipper series. I don't think you're going to get the gonna forty, the forty point explosions. Where I mean, what what year was that? Was that twenty twenty the twenty twenty one series where he had that game where he scored or assisted on like eighty percent of the team's <laughs> points? Remember that? Just probably the one where Boban started. Twenty twenty. It was probably twenty twenty one because he was the only it, one. It, I'm pretty sure it was twenty twenty one, and that's exactly the point. Is like. 
that was the Clipper strategy in a lot of ways was we're, uh, Cl- Luke is going to cook us, but then the fourth quarter is going to come around and this guy's just spent the last 36 minutes doing everything. And it's going to be Kawhi time. And Luke is going to kind of struggle a little bit. And he did, his numbers fell off in the fourth quarter of those series. And it wasn't really his fault. It was just, he spent so much time doing everything. And I don't think that's going to have to be the case anymore this year. It's going to let, let Kyrie cook, let Luca cook. And then don't be afraid to kick out to these guys who can do a little bit more than just stand in the corner and shoot threes. And I think if Luca's efficiency is still good, obviously, but his numbers go down a little bit, I think that's actually a really good thing for the Mavericks this series. Well, it's been what it's been how they've operated the last couple months of the season, which is why I, you and I both collectively have laughed at all the people that say Luca got to a slow start to the season because he was yeah. insanely good to start the season and his production actually went down the last couple of months because he hasn't had to do as much. You know, that's a, yep. that's a positive. And when you ask Luca to do less throughout the game, you can get more of him later. And it's one of the reasons why the Mavs have been the best clutch team in the NBA. And that's a, that's another thing we can talk about is the the clutchness mm-hmm. of it. Is like, will the Mavs clutch record hold up? And I, I we've seen them over and over again win games in a bunch of different ways. Uh, Clippers are 20, 22 and eighteen this season in the clutch, so fifty five percent. They're they're tenth in the NBA. The Mavs went 24 and nine. So Mavs, you know, didn't lose as much in the clutch as the Clippers. The Clippers are a little bit more prone to that. It's it's starting. I'm starting to starting to feel things. A a clutch duel between these two teams will be nuts though. Cause in all of the games that I went back and watched, I tried to sprinkle it in. Like I I wanted to watch games where the Clippers like dominant in. I wanted to watch close games. There is still just this inevitability with Kawhi. And it's just, they could be playing, I'm thinking back to the, the game against the Sixers that they won, where there was some really bad officiating at the end of the game. Uh, but there was just, they played so terribly all game, but were just close enough. And then Kawhi just, I mean, went to another planet in the fourth quarter. And he's still capable of that. And it doesn't matter how good of defense you play on him. Yeah. Like, it does not matter. It went, the, the type of shots that he takes and makes. I mean, we know firsthand experience. So... <laughs> When it gets to clutch time, I, I think the Mavericks have been better in the clutch all season long, but these two teams are similar in the sense that they have really tough shot makers and they have just good offense. Like they have good process and they'll get like the balls in Harden's hands or Paul George's hands or Kawhi's hands. You feel like you're going to get a decent enough shot. Same with Luke and, and I think, Kyrie. And I, the Clippers have the coaching advantage, I think. And so, Hey man, I, for some reason took that really, like, really took that personally. <laughs> Is there a reason why you took that personal? My head started tingling. I don't know why. And I don't, but but I, I say that because I don't think Ty Lue's just going to roll over and be like, ah, you know, we'll go to our small ball unit. You know, he's going to he's going to try something. He's going to try stuff. He's not just going to let the Mavs get whatever they want. <laughs> People are calling Kid a, a playoff riser. I mean, he did. <laughs> <laughs> if you made it this far in the if you've you made it this far in the audio podcast, uh. Check the just check the video. Yeah, I got a new That's lighting all. set up and it looks really good. Check check his new. I'm lighting. pretty happy That's with all. it. That's all I want to say. I was really kind of struggling with it all season long. <laughs> do you have any other concerns about the Mav side of things? We'll do the Clippers on Thursday, but do you have any other concerns on the Mav side of things? Luke and Kyrie are going to have to defend that yep. that much. That's a little concerning to me, but I'm not overly concerned about it. Uh, I don't want them to play directly into the Clippers' hands immediately. Like, I, I do agree with you that I think they have an advantage in a small ball, but I, I want to test out let, – let, let us see if if we can punish that small ball. Because in an ideal world, if Luke is yeah, cooking Zubats – Right, and if Luke is cooking Zubats, it, it will be beneficial to say, no, he's going to have to be on the floor. Like, you guys cannot go this small in this series. Like, you're going to have to live with Zubats out there and let – you know, either you guys have to change because the Clippers will switch everything. That's one thing I noticed watching. Like, that is what they do defensively. They're going to switch. Uh, yeah. That was the thing in the, in, the, in the 2021 series where it's like, why don't they just stop switching on the <laughs> on those screens? I don't understand it. But that's what they do. die on that. Yeah. And if Luka gets into that groove against Zubats or Kyrie even too, like, it, you know, it, it would be beneficial, I think, for the Mavs to t- just see can Gafford punish and lively punish a small ball unit? So you have to play Zubats. Like, we're not just going to go, all right, you guys are small. All right, Kleba, get out there. We're going small too. So that's, that's one thing that maybe scares me a little bit. Cause we've seen kids sort of give in to going small and playing into other teams' hands pretty quickly. I kind of am, I am concerned about the Mavericks not having enough scoring 
to keep yeah. up if it's if it's a foot race. If it's if the Mavs like maybe the Mavs defense Mavs defense has been great the last couple of months. Maybe it doesn't translate as well as that as one of the best defenses in the league. And so then you are playing 120 to 115 games against the Clippers. And where mm-hmm. will the scoring come from? Do they have enough? Because the Clippers, if they're healthy, Kawhi, Paul George, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell, I, I, and with Zubats in the pick and roll, they just keep coming at you. Mavs, it's Luka, Kyrie. Do you trust him? Do you trust PJ to do, you know, how much do you trust PJ to do on offense? Exum, what does he bring? We just talked about Derek Jones Jr. earlier. The the two rolling, the two rolling bigs. And so, like, are they going to miss that third or fourth, like, type of guy that can bring something else? Uh, I think Luka and Kyrie can overcome that, which is why I'm still going to pick the Mavs. But if I'm going to be concerned about something, it's going to be that. If the, you know, if the Clippers are going to win games, they're going to outscore the Mavs by, you know, a bunch, and the Mavs just won't be able to keep up, basically. Yeah, the, the role guys can't be timid. That's kind of just – they're going to have to shoot threes. Even if they're not falling, they're going to have to keep shooting. They're going to – they can't be scared to attack the rim. They can't be scared – with the ball in their hands. Like there's there's gonna be there's gonna be plenty of opportunities throughout the game where they're selling out on Luca or Kyrie and Derek Jones Jr. is gonna have a three yard driving lane and PJ's gonna have a three yard driving lane and Exum's gonna have a three yard driving lane. You just have to take them. You just have to take them. I've been looking at uh the Mavs since the trades against top ten offenses. Eleventh best defense over that stretch against top ten offenses. Yeah, we'll take that. Six and five in those games, and that, and that includes the like the Pacers, the two Pacers games. Yeah, that would include the two Pacers game, and I, I even think that includes the. Um, oh wait, no, I, I took off. Okay, I took off the last game of the season because that was really throwing. Yeah, some stats. I was say that, that, was... that was throwing some stats for a loop there, so I took that one off. But yeah, that that would include those two Pacers games. Yeah, Mavs have a good shot in this. We feel good about the Mavs side of this. We've answered some of the biggest questions. Slightly, and I will do the answers to the big Clippers questions. On Thursday, Darian and I have the the preview for you know the crossover with both of us. We did it in two parts, so that those will be playing the next two days too. Guys, thanks for listening to Locked On Babs. Peace out. Boom. Glad to do a show with you, Coach. Hey, I'm just watching, just like you guys. I'm not playing. I'm watching. Just.